Well, in case you've been living under a rock and you have no idea what's been going on in the WordPress community, today in this video, I'm gonna give you some updates with some page builder themes, a new PHP version, and also give you a sneak peek of my best web hosting results I've been recording for the past 60 days, but that'll be towards the end of the video. Now, first up is probably, you've probably already heard, is the Divi theme theme builder. Now, in case you still don't understand what the theme builder is and why this update is so huge, it's basically the fact that you can now fully design any single page you want, including category custom post type pages, WooCommerce pages, uh, LearnDash pages, uh, Lifter LMS pages. You can fully customize any single page you want that includes archive and custom post type pages as well. And I really do like the interface on this new theme builder. I mean, it's clean, it's beautiful, it's easy, it's simple. And honestly, that's what I really like about Elegant Themes the most is the fact that Whenever they release something, it's like always the best. Like it's always like super beautiful, you know? So I do have a full tutorial on the theme builder in the description below. So if you want to check that out and kind of understand what I what I'm trying to show and try to accomplish in that tutorial, you can go ahead and check it out in the video description below. It's basically me showing you how to use the theme builder. And just by looking at it, it's very self-explanatory. It's very simple to use. Next is WordPress acquires Tumblr. And uh, I guess after they required it, they announced there would be no more porn on it, which I guess scared about 40% of all users from the platform. And sadly, after that happened, a senator from um, Pennsylvania uploaded child porn on Tumblr. Poor Matt Moldwig. But I guess this guy stepped down and is arrested. But we'll see what happens with Tumblr because... Uh, it looks like WordPress uh, actually has some big plans for Tumblr. I'm not really sure how they're going to integrate it, yes, with WordPress. I'm not really sure what they're going to do to try to combine this. Maybe they might have like a login with Tumblr to WordPress.com, something like that. But it looks like right here they're trying to basically monetize it in some way with WordPress.com. So we'll see what that is all about. Next is the Avada theme has been introducing a lot of new features. Now, in case you haven't been hearing about Avada, they recently introduced their front end builder. So no longer can you only build from the back end, you can build from the front end with the Avada theme. And looking at a lot of their new updates I've been following up on, they added the new dynamic content to certain areas, animated headline text, uh, new gradient background options for certain containers and other features. So if you've never used the Avada theme, you know it's actually not that bad. In fact, uh, this is it right here. And um, you can simply add in sections whenever you want add an element, you know, I don't know what you want to add here, a, a, a pricing table, etc. And everything's visual, so you can always see what you're doing. Also right here, you just click on this little plus icon. It looks like it's a little glitchy right there. And add in three columns. And then here, you can just go ahead and select an element. And then there you go. So I'll be having a full more tutorial on the Avada theme front end builder. Um, it actually is pretty decent for just coming out. We can expect a lot more to come. It looks like even in their change log, they have been uh, fixing a lot of uh, bugs and glitches, which is bound to happen because they just introduced a front end editor. So yeah, they're gonna have a lot of things, but they're fixing it, they're up, they're updating stuff, they're improving stuff, and they're adding a lot more features. So make sure to keep an eye on Avada. Also, if you wanna go and check them out, there is, uh, there's a link for all of these things I'm talking about in the description below. So if you wanna go and look at any of them, you can go and check them out anytime you want to do that. Uh, next is a new PHP version, 7.4. Now this comes out in a few, well, it comes out maybe, comes out next month, a few weeks, three, four weeks, about a month, uh, 7.4. It looks like it's going to significantly boost performance on your web hosting. So we'll see what happens. In fact, you know what's really funny? A lot of uh, web hosting companies like uh, HostGator, uh, Bluehost, a lot of them don't even offer 7.3 yet. So I don't even know what's going on here, but we always want the fastest PHP version. But whenever you update your PHP, always, always, always make sure to see that if WordPress.org is basically compatible with it and having no issues with it, you can always check out their website and they'll let you know uh, what's the best PHP version for WordPress. So uh, don't update right away if you get it. Just always make sure WordPress says it's okay first before you throw yourself in the fire, you know? Uh, next is the Brizzy has introduced a design kit. And I didn't make a video on this, but this design kit is just simply stunning. And they give you over 501 uh, sections to use from. Now, to be honest, again, this is 10 times better than Elementor's blocks. And what we're seeing here, I think, is that a lot of these companies are getting more and more aggressive to kind of win people over 
from the Elementor Page Builder. Personally, I think that this Page Builder, once they introduced the Theme Builder and WooCommerce Builder, I would say it would be better than Elementor because the UX is way easier to understand. Uh, the blocks are 10 times better. Um, the overall performance of it is actually pretty good. They do still have some minor bugs and glitches to fix out and stuff like that, but ultimately this Page Builder is worth keeping your eye on. I've talked to a lot of my viewers. A lot of them say they have switched over because the amount of free blocks that you get with this page builder and also the UX is super easy to use. So make sure to check out Brizzy. There's a, um, a link below. It's also a free page builder, so you don't have to pay for it. So you can go ahead and uh, get the free version and you can always upgrade to the pro version later if you decide to do so. Next is the Onshine theme is introducing the same thing that Divi did. So this is actually including the new header and footer. And I like Onshine because the Tatsu Builder I've used before. In fact, I made a best web or best theme video was like a year ago or something like that. And the Page Builder is not bad at all. In fact, I like this one and also Massive Dynamics. I think the Page Builder, the UX is actually pretty easy. And just so you know that Onshine is introducing uh, headers and footers in their theme. So be sure to check that out. Flatsum. Flatsum right now is at a 3.9 version. Now, they've been introducing a lot of features. On their, on their theme right here, such as like uh, new terms and conditions in their checkouts, uh, ha options to have numbers on checkout steps, which usually requires a plugin, uh, minimal form styles for product pages. So they're adding different styles, which is pretty cool. Um, just different things are adding. Now I have heard rumors, I don't know, that Flatsum 4.0 is gonna have a completely new page builder. I don't know if that's true or not. I, 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 I don't know what to say about it. I mean. I think the Flatsum theme is great for e-commerce. And if you're gonna ask me what's the best for e-commerce, should I use uh, Divi, Elementor, or Flatsum? Uh, I do like the fact that Flatsum has their own studio and you can simply import their, their the, the Flatsum studio. They have like 500 plus templates. It makes everything really, really, really easy. And I've always liked the actual design and decor of Flatsum. Even if they don't have as many features as Elementor, I still do like this style of like, shopping cart, checkout, order complete. Uh, and here right here, you can see that they have their product page. Now they have different styles of their product page. So although they don't have the exact WooCommerce builder, they have like four or five versions. They're basically templates, which personally I think is better because if you give your client more control to do something, that's like the biggest nightmare you can do. Don't ever tell your clients, we can design the product page any way which, which you want. That's the worst thing you can do because clients don't know anything about design, about how the website should look. Trust me, I've done it for years. And I think the biggest problem with web design is not the actual web design process. It's dealing with these clients who want these stupid, unbelievably dumb features on their website. They'll go to Amazon and, oh, I want the new squiggly thing Amazon has. I'm like, honey, it's a piece of JavaScript, you know, like, like come on, like, but yeah, I've, I've licked the pot clean with that. But anyways, Flatsum has a lot of new things coming out. Also be sure to check out uh, Flatsum. I have a full tutorial on it as well. It's a great theme for e-commerce and I'm not sure if they're gonna have a new builder for 4.0. Be sure to check that out. Next is LA Dropship has a new theme for making dropship stores. So they actually emailed me and they told me that they have a new theme uh, made specifically for drop shipping. So if you are a drop shipper, uh, just know that they have this really like super clean user interface like this. And I think that this right here is something that you could probably use on your uh, on your website. And it's made more for conversion based. You can tell right here. I mean, this I really like how this looks right here. And yeah, you can probably do this with other page builders. But it's also like the ease and the like the simplicity of just getting a theme for 70 bucks, having everything designed for you already, etc. Because I still hear people saying, well, you can do that with Divi. Now you can do that with Elementor. You can do that with this. I'm like, yeah, but you know, having a theme that looks like this right here, and that's just you know a, a one button em, uh, demo import, is so much easier than having to build it from scratch. Just pay the 50 bucks, you know, like you know what I mean. Just pay the money. It's not being cheap. So be sure to check out this theme. I believe it is called El Greco. El 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 Greco. I, I think that's what it's called. El Greco. Let's see right here. Yeah, El Greco. Also, they have this one right here. I'm not a big fan of it. I think that it looks too much of a uh, spammy store. I don't like it. Um, but then again, depends on like what country you're in. You know, every country likes websites a certain style. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Japan, but their websites look really, really clustered and really just like, 
It looks like a train wreck, but that's what sells out there. So that's what they like. So you have to make the website according to what country you are making it for. Uh, next is there is a new WordPress. Uh, what do you want to say? A WordPress camp. And I guess this one's very big. Uh, Matt Mullenweg will be speaking at it, talking about the future of WordPress, etc., and talking all about that. So be sure to check it out. Now, I also want to talk to you guys about one little question too. What do you guys think about WordPress going public? You know, I, I, I've, I've heard that being thrown around a little bit and I actually welcome it a lot. Uh, I think WordPress should go public because uh, quite personally, when I first talked about it, I was a little against it because I'm going to say, what do shareholders know about uh, WordPress developments, you know? But then again, we're at this point now where WordPress has such a large user base and we have Matt Mullenweg with his few developers making these decisions that influence and affect more than maybe like 100 million people, 100 million websites. So at that point... I mean, most of the companies he works with are already public, so they've already made the decision to go public, and they need the fundraising. I mean, it says that Matt Mullenweg was trying to trying to like fundraise more than three hundred million dollars for something, and I think going public for WordPress would be one of the best things for it. Now, it is true that um, you know if that were to happen, that management could always change, and they are elected by shareholders, etc. But we're at a point in time right now where I just don't think Matt Mullenweg could handle this many websites, he really can't be the best person to make all of the decisions for every developer that's working on WordPress and for every website out there, I think there'd be more of a panel that would kind of need to make decisions together. You know what I mean? So uh, they didn't make the WP governance program, but quite honestly, it's useless because all it is is really a feedback community where they just get feedback and they just say, okay, we'll take that into consideration and then nothing happens. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, next is a new WordPress update as well, uh, 5.2.4. I think it has already just been released uh, a few days ago. So if you're getting like the uh, notification to updates, it's really not a big update. I saw someone else talking about it and they were like, oh my God, everything's going to change. And nothing really changed, guys. It's like they just changed like uh, the, some security patches. Like nothing really was like done crazy. So uh, yeah, so that's that. So nothing really changed that much. They designed like a few different colors, uh, like a button might look different and they just patched up some security things. But overall, like the user interface is quite the same. Next, let's talk about the best web hosting. Now, I'm recording around 20 different web hosting companies. Now, some of these include hosting companies like Kinsta, we have Flywheel, we have Media Temple, et cetera. And I'm just gonna give you a sneak peek of the companies that are actually performing the best right now. Now, I'm recording a lot of companies. You can see from this list right here, I have tons and tons of companies that I'm recording. And the best ones right now are gonna be Kinsta, Flywheel, and for shared hosting, we have Name Hero and we still have SiteGround. Again, these companies maintain a really good reputation. And of course, guess who, guess, just guess which the worst one is. Which one's the worst hosting company? Let's pick on them. Right here, it is HostGator with these just drastically long loading times. Like, you know, it's like after EIG sucked them up, they just like just pooped them out and just like made them the worst company. I mean, I remember a few years ago, HostGator shared was a solid web host. It was really solid and, and now it's just, it's complete garbage. But looking at these numbers right here, you know, in fact, right here, it looks like over the past 24 hours, Name Hero outperformed Kinsta, which is pretty crazy. And SiteGround, again, is right behind that with just a little bit more loading speed. Let's go here to page speed really quick and talk about this. So right here, you can see the median load time for the websites. So A2 Hosting, Bluehost, etc. cetera. Uh, right here, again, Flywheel is one of the lowest. Now, remember, 689 MS, that's not a second. So that's like point of a second. So that's loading at 0 0.70 of a second, <laughs> right? Uh, right here, GoDaddy, not performing that good. Not not too good. HostGator, man, geez, almost nine seconds to load your website. You know, if you're watching this video and you have HostGator, just unsubscribe from this channel and go somewhere else, all right? That's that's what happens when you have HostGator, all right? But if you do wanna switch, you can, you can resubscribe and then switch to SiteGround or Name Hero. I do have links to both of those companies in the description below. Also, Kinsta Hosting as well. Kinsta Hosting, really, really performing well. Flywheel, also really performing well. Now, in defense, Flywheel and Kinsta are supposed to be hosting faster than companies like Name here on SiteGround because they are not using a shared server. So seeing this right here from Name Hero, I'm just stunned. I mean, also from SiteGround, they're basically neck and neck with companies like Kinsta and also Flywheel. 
Now, over the long term, I really can't say if those are going to be permanent results, but uh, it looks like from what I've seen that these web hosting companies are always performing consistently well. Uh, also, WP Engine performing really well. Their low speed is around 634 MS. Let me go back over here to uptime again, just to kind of give you a quick little view. Actually, let's let's do something different here. Let's go to the past seven days and let's then let's see what's going on here because I'm sure you want to see what's going on more than just just the day right here. So uh, here I'll go ahead and go to last seven days and let's go ahead and scroll down. Did that change? Let me think here. Last let's see last seven days. Oh yeah, it did change. Oh okay. So last seven days. So who's been performing really really well here? Um, Flywheel again performing really really well. Uh, Hostgator man, you're consistently screwing up man consistently. Host Papa, not too good. In motion, man. These guys are these guys need some help. I mean, they're out there with Hostgator. Again, Kinsta is just performing really, really well. Name Hero, Cycron again, just right below them. I mean, these guys are performing really, really well. Let's go on over to page speed really quickly. Oh, so this is actually for the last seven days. Now I'm actually recording each website individually as well. So uh, right here, for example, I'm recording WP Engine on this one. I saw the plugin to monitor their, their load speed and also the server response time. So I'll be giving my full results within probably uh, next week. But um, from right now, I think the winners already just by looking at this are gonna be the known hosting companies. Definitely Kinsta. Uh, Kinsta has surprised me. I've heard people talk about Kinsta. Never really decided to, you know, talk about them too much. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not gonna talk about them until I do a damn review. I'm not gonna put my neck on the line and make them look good when I don't know their hosting uh, capabilities and they are really, really good. So uh, for hosting companies, I would probably recommend Kinsta. We'll recommend Flywheel, Flywheel's good. But personally, I do like Kinsta more. I do like their interface better than than uh, than Flywheel, but that's that's up to you. And then again, for uh, shared hosting accounts, it's going to be SiteGround, it's going to be SiteGround, Name Hero, definitely top two. Um, I did actually recommend Green Geeks last year. They're performing decent, but they aren't performing the best. But then again, I have to get all the data from the last two months and see which hosting company is performing the best. But let me know what hosting company you think is going to win. And also, if you want to go ahead and check out Kinsta Hosting, they're relatively a new company that I've been monitoring. They are a little pricey, but then again, with these results, you are getting what you're paying for. I mean, if you want, you can go on over to... Um, well, I, I kicked a hosting company out actually on this list. There was a there was a hosting company that was so bad. Oh, InterServer, InterServer. Okay, these guys. So I actually purchased hosting from InterServer, and my, my website went down three times. And I opened up a ticket, and then they're like, "Oh, did you refresh your cache?" I'm like, "Guys, it, no, we're beyond that. Like, you guys messed up." And uh, I fixed it the first time. It went down again. The second time it went down. The third time I submitted a ticket, and their ticket system was broken. I just said, okay, screw you guys, I'm going home. So InterServer, unfortunately, never use them ever. They're terrible, uh, don't use them at all. And I'll talk more about them in the video. I have screenshots of their customer service reps. It's incredible. So let me know what you think about these hosting companies. Also, let me know about any of these themes or anything that we talked about today in this video. All right, and also be sure to check out the new Divi Theme Builder. My name is Daryl Wilson, and I will see you all in the next video.